Indonesian Dayak tale. It tells the story of this beautiful young woman who lives in this village. And she's married to a man that is very angry and mean to her. So every day, the young woman seeks solace in the forest. One day, she meets a hunter and they fall in love. The husband soon finds out, however, and so he gathers his cronies to track them down in the forest. And upon hearing this, the couple sprint through the forest to get away. They eventually get separated, and so they both beg the great forest spirit to take pity on them. The great forest spirit hears their calls and lifts them up into the trees. They are then given super long arms so they can swing between the branches and beautiful voices. The couple basically become gibbons, and with their new songs, they're able to always find each other in the forest forevermore. We're now near Transit 1B. Um, they had the sleeping area last night, so that means that they have to wait for the singing before we can approach the group, so we know the exact location. We heard like this beautiful, really haunting, a song that was like carrying across the canopy towards us and it was so magical and instantly from that moment I was absolutely hooked. So I always loved animals from a small age and I always loved monkeys and I had my first monkey encounter whilst living in Indonesia. We went to the monkey forest in Bali. I remember I saw this monkey um, next to my mum and it was baring its teeth. I pointed and I said to my mum, oh my God, look, that monkey's smiling at me. And I remember my mum was like, Caroline, I don't think that monkey's smiling at you. It's actually like an aggressive uh, threat uh, display. And I just got really interested in studying primates, gibbons specifically, because they are such a fantastic, incredible, charismatic group of primates. They're often referred to as being the forgotten apes. Everyone's heard about gorillas, chimpanzees, um, orangutans, and they get a lot of research and funding attention. Whilst gibbons, for some weird reason that we're not really sure why, they don't get as much attention. And they should, because 19 of the 20 species are considered to be on the brink of extinction. They are highly threatened by habitat loss, hunting, sometimes they're used in traditional medicines. My research journey with gibbons actually started here in southern Borneo, which is an island that's made up of Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. In Indonesia, I was working in that peat swamp forest and in the wet season, peat swamp can come up to your waist. So you fall into the peat swamp and it's very hard to like move through. So the gibbons would be like running off into the distance and there would be me like trying to hurry through this peaty mud. So a completely different type of fitness, I think. But I think good field research, is, it's always mental fitness. From our research that we did there, so we'd go out, we'd follow the primates from the moment they get up to the moment they go to bed, and we'd be recording where they were going, so ranging data. We'd look at who they socializing with. We would, would, would record any interesting uh, behaviors that you might not necessarily see, maybe different species interacting and things like that, and feeding ecology data. And one of the things we record with gibbons is singing behavior. And as I mentioned, gibbons' song is really important for their social reinforcement. In 2015, we had some of the worst forest fires we have ever seen since 1997 across Borneo. And 
I can't even tell you what it was like to live there. Like I would wake up in the night properly choking for oxygen and you could not see maybe three meters in front of you because there was like this yellowish hazy smoke. You could always see it like around you in the air. It was just absolutely intoxicating. So I had this idea. I woke up one morning and, and I went to the media manager and I said, I want to I write a children's storybook. And we created a book called The Little Gibbon Who Lost His Song. And it's based on scientific fact that the gibbons do not sing in smoky conditions. And Little Gibbon, he's the star of the book and he goes on this little journey. He meets lots of different animals in the forest and it's to raise awareness about the biodiversity in the area as well. about nine o'clock in the morning. I'm waiting for the gibbons to start singing, but I don't think it's going to happen. So we're right next to Skywalker gibbon territory, where Group A apparently normally come close to the house and sing. But over there is the forest, um, really high up in the mountains, and that's where the Skywalker gibbons have been forced up into that area, mainly due to human encroachment over hundreds of years. When you think about conservation issues, whether it's habitat loss, hunting, they all involve people. So surely the solution needs to involve people as well. So my project is very much multidisciplinary, which means that I incorporate biological and social science methods. So I spend most of my time actually immersing myself with local communities and interviewing local people about how they value the environment, how they value the gibbons themselves, what resources are important for them in the forest and which areas are important for them to, to visit in the forest itself. And it definitely provides more of a context. The camp had a beautiful setup. There was like a big shack uh, with nice beds inside, um, dried meat hanging outside, you know, ready to like, feed you that evening. Uh, we'd make a fire every night and we'd sit around the fire and we'd just chat informally and it was a great opportunity for me to practice my very very bad Mandarin. You know often people would have a couple of laughs because I can't pronounce certain words and it was a lovely way of kind of bonding with the team. So I've recently moved to the Wai Valley and as you can see it's fantastic being back in nature in the gorgeous Forest of Dean. So it feels a little bit like being back in one of my gibbon forests, a little taste of home. This is my little office setup when I'm not in the field. This is where you'll normally find me. So whilst I'm here I am analysing all my data. So in total, I collected just over 400 local community interviews. The dream is to obviously write that up into a killer doctorate thesis and hopefully some associated publications and reports that I will disseminate amongst all the local communities that I've been working with across China and also with local and regional governments as well. We need more gibbonologists, so more people who are interested in studying gibbons. And so that's something I've been trying to do for the last few years as a lecturer. I'm always encouraging my students to study gibbons and get more involved with primates. In gibbonology, we have International Gibbon Day on the 25th of October. And here we basically do lots of gibbon activities across the world, but I always do a couple in London and we invite lots of people. And slowly, you know, we are reaching more and more people each year. 